Um, she had a boat incident and we didn't know she had Chiari malformation. And when she fell off the boat, she hit right on her Chiari and it caused a left side stroke. She had a 5% chance of living. I mean, what, what's 5% compared to no life? There's 5%, you take it. <laughs> right, Lainey? Yep. <laughs> they had been talking about where we would like to be. They referred us to a re rehabilitation center, but I wanted to be home in Oklahoma. One of the main treatments in pediatric spinal cord injury now is neurostimulation. And it helps them recover as well as be able to replace function that they lost. And so the pacer is an addition to that. Whenever you breathe on a ventilator, air is pushed into the lungs by positive pressure. That alone can make your diaphragms weak as well as predispose you to more respiratory infections. It makes it more difficult to speak, to swallow, to eat. So the phrenic nerve pacer, there's never been one done in Oklahoma on a pediatric patient. And so the criteria that needed to be met for Lainey to be you know, a candidate and receive that was her diaphragm had to just not work. And she had some underlying issues that they didn't know about. And so her diaphragms stopped working. In pursuit of diaphragm pacing, um, we were privileged to be able to start working with OU Children's Neurosurgery Department. Dr. Andrew J. Um, he's the Chief of Neurosurgery at OU Children's, actually has had experience in this before. And so when I was able to talk with him, we were able to um, work together and bring in the company that has created the pacer and uh, be able to partner together to do this implantation. The process was easy. I mean, the surgeons came in, they talked to us, they did more of a detail of how the procedure was gonna go, exactly where the pacer was gonna go. When Lainey has the pacer on, that diaphragm contracts similar to what ours does on a normal breathing cycle, and then air is able to flow in. She is ventilator dependent. She cannot take big enough breaths on her own. She can't do those things by herself without the ventilator. This allows her to be completely separate from the vent. She can do things, you know, that she wouldn't necessarily be able to do if she had to be attached to the vent all the time. And this is all she has. And so it gives her an amazing amount of freedom as well as a more normal respiratory uh, pattern to breathe. I can go outside without the ventilator. Um, I can eat better. I can smell everything better. <laughs> and I talk louder. How come did you feel? Mm, very excited to have a change in life. Her self-confidence came up. She's just very, she's Lainey. She's the old Lainey. They were constantly giving us feedback on it. Um, not only feedback, but they cared about our feelings about it and reassured us everything was gonna be fine, which it is. <laughs> it was nice being a part of something from the ground up, something kind of groundbreaking. And it let me use a different set of skills as a respiratory therapist. It just makes sense that we're the first one. I mean, and it fits where we're going in the future too, you know, for our hospital. Something that you wanted, but I knew you thought. What's that about? Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to repay back my mom and family for not giving up on me so I could have a second chance in life.